Hallelujah. Guys, what a joy it is to be communing with Jesus. Right? Yeah. Yes? yes? And with each other. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You know, guys, I have a word for you. I have a word for you. Is that good? Yeah. yeah. And um, see, what it is, is it's going to be a, it's going to be a mind shift word, uh, a perception shifting word. And it's the first in the series of the Christ consciousness. And today's message is going to be called, Will the Real Jesus Stand Up? Okay? So guys, I want to start by reading to you, um, let's see. Yep, let me read to you from, the f I actually have some notes today. Um, I sat down to prepare yesterday and, and the thoughts just came rushing in. I couldn't really um, write everything down. But I've written some scriptures and I've written some um, points, and that's what I'm going. We're going to weave together today. Is that okay? Yeah. Everybody ready to stay awake? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. And you know, I wanted to say, don't bother with notes, guys. Just absorb with your spirit being today. Just don't bother with notes. And if you find yourself falling asleep, shake yourself awake. Stand up. Move around. Yeah. Scream. Hmm. I'll have to extort you guys again. <laughs> Last week, I meant to say exhort, and I said extort. <laughs> and, and everybody was like, okay. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'm going to encourage you, and that will cost you $1,000. <laughs> That's extortion. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyways, um, so, so keep stay awake, you guys. And, you know, I wanted to say, you guys, we've become so quiet when we listen to the word. Can we not do that? Can we just be noisy? Can we even jump up? Can we even jump around? Can we just come to the front? Can we come and give me a high five? Can just do something, keep your energy up. Is that good? Yeah. Hallelujah. So what I want to share is about Jesus the Messiah. Jesus the anointed one. Yeah? And let me just read to you a quick scripture from 1 John chapter 4 and verse 17. And um, it's all from the New King James today. But 1 John chapter 4 and verse 17. Holy Spirit, we welcome you to keep speaking to us, to keep moving in our midst. We open our hearts and we say, come Lord, freely we choose to receive. We choose to receive freely from, from the depths of your heart. Fill us with your life. Fill us with truth. Fill us with grace. Fill us with power. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm so done with same old, same old. Right? I know I say this all the time, but I'm so done with staying in the same... I don't want to stay in the same place two consecutive days. Right? I want to be going from glory to glory. Don't you? I want to be going from strength to strength. Hallelujah. I want to be experiencing realms and dimensions in God and going on to deeper things. And it's all, it's all accessible through that open door like Rachel and Kendra were leading us. Your, your presence is an open door. Yeah? And that's what, that's what we're going into today, just another realm, another level, another dimension. And so in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 17, I know we've looked at this multiple times. It says, um, love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Uh, hang on a minute. Nope, that's not the one. It's, a, it's an awesome <laughs> scripture. The one I was looking for was, um, as he is in this world, so are we. Yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. Oh, of course it is, yeah. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so are we in this world. And... Straight off from that scripture, I want to read you from the book of Revelations, chapter 1. You know, my mom used to always hate reading the book of Revelations in the sense that she'd get really freaked out by some of the imagery. And it, the thing about Revelations is that it's written um, in, in a timeless dimension, in a timeless 
in a timeless dimension, meaning there's things in Revelations which are historical from the past. There's things that were happening currently then which John was seeing, you know, in the political realm and, and, and uh, the kingdom stuff. And there were also things that were to come. So it's, it's a great big mix, a uh, stew of different things. And so it can be overwhelming. But in this scripture, guys, in the book of Revelations chapter 1, see, we're told that Paul was on the Isle of Patmos. He was, he was a prisoner for the, for the word of God. And, um, and he had this encounter where he experienced a heavenly vision. And he says from verse um, 8, he says, well, let me read from verse 7. He says, behold, he's coming with clouds. Let me start from verse 4. So it says, John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he's coming with clouds, and every eye will see him. Hallelujah. Even they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. And then he says, I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last and what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. And then John says, Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, meaning that he, he had the resemblance of a human being clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with, with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. Can you picture that, you guys? His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the voice of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun, shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and death. Hallelujah. So the first scripture I read to you was what John wrote, you know, as he is in this world, so are we. And I just want to ask you, you guys, if as he is in this world, so are we, who are you like? Who is Jesus like to you? What is your awareness of Jesus, the Christ? You know, there's a huge difference between Jesus of Nazareth and Jesus the Christ. Yeah? And there's another scripture in the book of Revelations, and it is Revelations chapter 19. And listen to this. It says, um, Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire. We have those eyes again. And on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. And the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. 
Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. Isn't that amazing, you guys? What do you think it all means? What does it signify? Remember, Jesus was the lo is the Logos, the Word made flesh. Remember in the book of John, chapter 1, um, John writes and says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Hallelujah. This is talking about the fact that everything comes forth from the Word, the Logos, who is Jesus the Christ. He was eternally existent. That's why the Word became flesh, became a seed which was embodied into, implanted into the womb of a woman, of a virgin. But the Christ was ever existent, eternally eternally there before all of time and space, beyond any dimension that we could understand or know. He knew you. He saw you. He already chose you and had relationship with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, you guys, all the years I was a child and growing up, you know, in church and stuff, and you'd go to Sunday school. And, and this is why when we start Sunday school, which is very soon, we're going to be teaching the kids exactly what we're learning here. Empowerment and strength and overcoming and the reality and the, and the manifestation of the word, the logos. Hallelujah. But all the years I was a child, you know, I, you know what it's like. You learn the stories that are in the Gospels. And guys, see, you see there's a huge difference. Jesus is referred to as a man in the Gospels because he was Jesus of Nazareth, right? He called himself the Son of Man. He was fully man all the years that he walked the earth, and he did amazing and mighty, beautiful miracles, but by the power of the Holy Spirit who came upon him after his baptism at the age of 30. Right? And I remember you guys, as a child in my uh, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, having encounters in my sleep, having encounters with God, being aware of light and power more than I could ever quantify or understand. But I had zero grit for it. Why? Because I had been taught about gentle Jesus, meek and mild, in a, in a lovely long robe just doing good and being kind to people and feeding people and doing things that made them happy. But hey, guess what? You see another side of Jesus, right? When you look at the, um, the cleansing of the temple, right? As he is, so are we. And in the book of John, the John's version is actually in chapter 2, and we're told how, you know, he, he, when he went into the temple and he saw all the stuff that was going on and all the, the, the deception and the cheating of people and the, the, the merchandising of the things of God, the hypocrisy that was happening, the oppression, the control, how the, how the leadership would, would control and oppress people and, and, and extort <laughs> from them, Okay. And he was so mad about it. And we're told, just, just, this is this gentle Jesus, meek and mild. Tell me. Yeah. We're told in chapter 2, verse 15, when he had made a whip of cards, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overturned the tables. And he said to those who sold doves, take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Then his disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house has eaten me up. And that really made the, the, the Pharisees, the Jewish leadership, so mad. And, and they decided they were going to deal with him. They were going to get rid of him. They were going to do something to him to stop him breaking the structure and breaking down the system. 
By the way, every time you go against the system, you know, you're going to face a backlash. Just know that. Even whether it's in your workplace or out there in the world or in your, in your, um, in your family, yeah, wherever it is or in, in your church or whatever. But if there is a, a religious system, wherever that may be, and you start to stand against it, right? You, it's a law-based system. system. And, and really, that's what, a, that's what the religious spirit is all about. It's about adhering to the system, the law, the standard. You know, don't deviate from the letter of the law. Yes? Hallelujah. Come on, wake up, you guys. Is it too, is it too hot in here? No? Okay. Hallelujah. So, so who is this person, you guys? Who is this one that you want once, you know, when um, Rachel was lead, leading us in that song, uh, when I lock eyes with you? Who have you locked eyes with? You know, what the Lord was showing me was that according to our, um, according to our revelation is how we can worship. If, if when we can't worship, it's only because of how we are seeing God how we're seeing Jesus. See, see, God has created us in, to such a high spec, all of us, you know, some more than others. <laughs> but all of you guys, you're, you're filled with wisdom. You have amazing brains. You have strength in your body. You have the ability to learn anything, do anything. And, and because of that, the human heart is hungry to worship someone greater than himself. And unless you see God as God, and even while we truly say as he is, so are we. And we have been elevated to be a co-inheritors with him, ruling and reigning in heavenly places in our spiritual realm. Amen? But he's still God. He's still the king of kings. He's still the savior of my soul. The only way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, if I don't see him as the Christ, I can't worship him. Because my worship is a response to my revelation. If I'm seeing him as gentle Jesus, meek and mild, he's a good person. And he sometimes hears my prayers. But can I worship him? Can I, can I prostrate myself before him? Can I give him my all? Can I lay down my life before him? Can you? Who is he to you? Who is the Christ to you? See, the word Jesus comes from the Hebrew word Yehoshua, which is the origin of Joshua and uh, Yeshua and all those words. It means God saves us. Or God save us. Or God save, saves. And the word Christ means anointed one. It means Messiah. It means the smeared one. Smeared with the oil of God. The oil of anointing. And if as he is, so are you in this world. That means you are as the Christ. Anointed with his spirit. Empowered to live a life that's victorious, a life that's overcoming. And as he is in that world, so are you in this. The manifestation of Christ. And it's, I want to ask you today, you guys, are you, are you open to being embodied by the Christ? Wow. Not just Jesus of Nazareth, but are you open to being filled with the Christ? Are you open to being filled with the Christ? Yeah? Hallelujah. So what is Christ consciousness all about then? What does it mean to keep conscious of something? A consciousness of someone or something? You know, when you say that, um, that you feel self-conscious, what does that mean? That means you are tuning into you. You're, you're tuning into your body and soul and, and how do I feel and, and how, how, uh, how, how do I 
react to this and how am I feeling here and, and oh, everyone's looking at me. And you know, that self-consciousness. So then what would Christ consciousness mean? You know, I had I typed up the, the a prayer of St. Patrick. You guys know who St. Patrick was? Yeah. He was um, a man who supposedly brought, his, well, I, history says he brought the gospel to Ireland and many hundreds of years ago. But he was such a powerful man of God, you guys, that he has would raise the dead. Multiple, multiple hundreds of people were raised from the dead. Even animals. Isn't that awesome? That he even raised animals from the dead. How I know this was when my dog died and I was trying to raise him up from the dead. I read about St. Patrick. But, um, but um, St. Patrick had, was... was was such a mighty man of God, and we're told that snakes disappeared from Ireland when St. Patrick went. I think somebody had been bitten by a snake or something like that, but he, he, he banished them from the nation forever when he raised the person up, some story like that. I'm sorry if the facts are not 100%. <laughs> but, um, but he had a prayer, this powerful man of God. And I, if somebody can just get it for me on their phone... Oh, please. Yeah, thank you. No kidding. That's so cool. Because I typed it up, but we couldn't do an overhead with it. Amen. This is awesome. So this is the whole prayer. And it says, I arise today through the strength of heaven, light of the sun, splendor of fire, speed of lightning, swiftness of the wind, depth of the sea. Can you see how he's seeing Christ in everything? Stability of the earth, firmness of the rock. I arise today through God's strength to pilot me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye to look before me, God's ear to hear me, God's word to speak for me, God's hand to guard me, God's way to lie before me, God's shield to protect me, God's host to save me, afar and anear, alone or in a multitude. Now listen to this. Christ shield me today against wounding, Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in the eye that sees me, Christ in the ear that hears me. I arise today through the mighty strength of the Lord of all of creation, the Christ. The Christ. Thank you. That's amazing that you had that. Thank you, Deborah. Oh, cool. That's awesome. The Christ. What does it mean to be conscious of Christ? He's ever before me. He's ever behind me. He's ever within me. He's in my thoughts. He's in my words. He's in my food. He's in the people I commune with, whoever they may be. The creative power of God, that force, that, that life resident in everyone, even and in everything, even the things we don't consider God things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we see when Jesus came and, and um, brought a little correction in the temple. He was being the Christ. He was being the anointed one, the one empowered to make changes. And you know, guys, you know, there's some of us here who really care about social justice, and that's such a good thing. That's such a God thing. That's such a God thing. We need to care. That's what Christ Jesus was all about, that he came and he never left a place the same. He came and he changed everything. He shifted atmospheres. He changed the frequency. He brought something new. Nothing stayed the same when he had been there. Is that the Christ we want to be like? Is that the Christ we want to be like? Christ in me, the hope of glory. Did you notice that Paul never said, Jesus in me, the hope of glory. He said, Christ in me, the hope of glory. You want to see the glory of God manifested? Stay conscious of the Christ in you. Hallelujah. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus walked into that temple, premeditated. You know, he created a whip. And he walked in there 
dealing out some fivefold ministry. <laughs> okay? He brought some correction there. And so we can see that, we, we, you know, all my life, you guys, like my, in my home, in my family, my mom was super sweet and gentle and lovely and, and adorable and always kind and cuddly, except when she punished me. Uh, but always good and sweet. And my dad was the total opposite. He was super domineering, quick to anger, you know, in generally in a state of latent anger, chronic anger. But, and so uh, there was like a distinction that was brought in our, in our general family that good and Jesus meant, and my dad didn't love Jesus, so um, good and uh, blessed and the right thing was to be calm and quiet and submissive and, and demure and, and, and non-contentious. You know what I mean, non-contentious? And, and that the bad thing was to be loud and vociferous and, and angry, or you know? But Jesus was pretty angry in this scripture when he walked in and he said, how dare you turn my father's house into a, into a market? It is a house of prayer. Yeah? And so just going back to those social justice things, it's a good thing to care because it's all about establishing the righteousness of God, the justice of God. Last Thursday, Peter shared at Open Heaven Unlimited, and he was talking about what does righteousness mean. Guys, just watch the video when you can. Yeah, what does righteousness really mean? It's really all about justice, God's justice, yeah? And, and that's what Jesus was doing when he walked in through the temple. He was being the Christ, yeah? Hallelujah. And so, you know, you guys, you see in that scripture I read to you from um, um, Revelation chapter 19, where it talks about the Christ... And he's, we, we, John says, the heavens opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. Yeah? Everything he does is perfectly fair, perfectly just, perfectly righteous, even when it feels like a bad thing. And we're told that he was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. See, every time you come under the covering of the Word of God, you come under the covering of the Logos, the one whose robe is dipped in blood. Jesus the Christ covering us with his redemptive power, all powerful on that white horse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Riding to justice, riding through the nations of the world, restore, bringing restoration bringing justice. What about Devon, you guys? He, Christine didn't mention this, but he's, he, was, he was sliced by a teenager who drove through a red light while Devon was on his motorbike just out to have a good time somewhere and meet his friends. Is that justice that he should have, could he, if he lost his leg, would that have been just? Would that have been fair? No but the righteousness of God stepped in. The righteousness of God, that's God's justice, that he makes it okay. Hallelujah. And he wears a robe. Just, just think about it. This glorious God, Christ the Messiah, with the eyes flashing like fire, and he wears a robe that's bloodstained. A bloodstained robe, what does that mean? That's the redemptive power of Jesus Christ. It's the redemptive power of him, the word, the logos, the word made flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I've just, I, was, I, I just wrote down in my notes this morning, I said he was not nice. <laughs> he was not nice, you know? He was not nice, and he was not afraid. Say, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. And I'm not afraid to stand against the system. If God calls you to stand for something that you believe in, don't be afraid, you guys. 
You have a great role model. You have Jesus the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. And why? Because Christ in you is the hope of glory. Amen? The Logos, the Messiah, the smeared one. Amen? See, people are looking for the presence of God in places. And, and, you know, we've done that. We've done the rounds in the past. Like, you know, everybody knows the big church in California, Northern California. And we've, we would run there for conferences and everything because, because of, of what we experienced. And it's beautiful. It's awesome. We want that. But, guys, you know, I found this scripture, Acts chapter 7 and verse 48, where it says uh, Stephen is talking to um, the people and he's saying no more does this God dwell in temples made of hands? God is spirit. And where does he dwell now? He dwells in you. He dwells in you. He dwells in you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of the Christ. You are the temple. Why is there an awesome vibe when we come together and we worship? It's because of each of you connecting, releasing from inside you. He doesn't have to come from somewhere else. He's in you. And the more you allow him to embody you, the more and fill you up, the more he will. See, it's not your spirit that's the temple, remember? Yes? Paul writes to the Corinthian church and he says, he doesn't say your spirit is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Paul says, for your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Am I right? Amen. Hallelujah. He says your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and you are not your own. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, 2 Corinthians 3.16, do you not know? that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. In fact, he goes on to say in verse 17, if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Not from anything you could do, but because of the Messiah living in you, the Spirit of the Christ that's Christ consciousness, you guys. Just imagine how different you would be, how different you'd feel every day. Every day. Think about that person that you feel really oppressed by, really irritated by, really annoyed by. How would you walk into your place of work? How would you walk down the street? How would you walk through the mall if you felt like the roaring, fiery, eyes like fire, giant Jesus, the Christ, was living inside of you. Right? See, there's a wimpy picture that we've had, which we have to shift from our minds, guys. You're not meant to be a doormat. And be, see, because of, because of, the, because of the image of Jesus Christ going to the cross, see, that was not about that was, that was not about being a doormat. That was about being a sacrifice. And the fact is that because he took it, you don't have to. That's what Phil was saying, right? During communion, it is finished. That fight was done. That struggle is finished, right? And that's why you can walk, you can walk like there's a lion inside of you, right? Because you, are, you can grow into the size of your spirit. You can grow into the size of his spirit. He's not contained. Gentle Jesus, meek and mild doesn't have to be limited by you, right? Hallelujah. So no more does he dwell in temples built of hands. Because you are his holy temple. Thank you, Lord, and you will be like the Christ that you are conscious of. See, Jesus said in uh, John chapter 7, he said, come to, me all, come to me and drink, 
All you who are thirsty, come to me and drink. He said, in, um, in the book of Matthew, he said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Can you be that answer for somebody? Can you be that Christ for someone? That they can come to you and drink? That they can come to you and just, just sit by you and just feel rested? Just feel the peace just because they are by your side. That you just shake their hand and they go, you go, you go away and, and they feel healed. You know, just two days ago, I went to the post office courthouse in um, Arlington, and this lady who served me, I always, you know, find it limiting to speak, muffled from behind a mask, and, and my woolly hat and everything. <laughs> but, um, but she had, um, her, she, her arm was hurt, you know? And I had to quickly sneak a prayer in before the next person, you know, got impatient because they were waiting for me, and I had to, like, mumble it, but, so she wouldn't be embarrassed. But I just got a chance to pray for her under the, under the perspex glass, you know, and the mask and everything. But you know what I mean, guys? Can you stay so conscious of Christ in you that you can be the solution for somebody else? That, and, and, and that you, you be the solution for you too. Because, because of Christ in you. Yeah? That you don't have to be saying, help, help, help God, for him to come and, 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 and take care of you because he's inside of you. He's one with you. The eyes of fire, Jesus, the Christ, is manifesting from inside of you. And the more you allow him to do that, the more he will do that. Yeah? yeah. Hallelujah. It's going to change how you live, you guys. Just going to change the way you see life, the way you see yourself. You know, some, how do you stay conscious of Christ's so presence in you? Like right now, you are conscious of it. That's beautiful. That's amazing. What about when you leave here and you're on the highway or you wake up in the morning and you feel really rough and you, and you just see yourself in the mirror and you're like, sheesh, who are you? <laughs> You know what I mean? How do you stay conscious? Remember St. Patrick's prayer. Bring, bring him to the forefront of your mind. You know, you don't have to spend hours and hours in prayer to be, stay conscious of the Christ in you. Just remind yourself. Nobody else is going to do it for you. And then it becomes such a pattern, such a habit. As you wake up, connect to him. Wow, you are the Christ, and you're with me? Yes. So guys, let's not wait for an outward thing to happen to us, something to come and, and capture our hearts. Choose today to fall in love. Choose today to, to lock eyes with those fiery eyes. To allow your life to take on another level, take on another dimension. To, you know, this is going to be the doorway for everything else you want in the spirit realm. Yeah. If you want something for your life, you have to make a change and decide to do that for yourself this year. Yeah. Otherwise, you're never going to say things, see things change. You want the Christ inside of you. Get fierce with yourself. Yeah. Get fierce with the things that hinder you from getting into him. Yeah? yeah? Hallelujah. And, you know, we're going to look more at some of these scriptures. But I just want to read to you something. I think I read it last week from um, Ephesians chapter 3 before I close. And um, it's so interesting that Paul, Paul talks about the Christ yeah. all the time. You know, you see Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. They talk about Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah. And Paul is saying... For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Chapter 3, verse 14. Um, and then he says, um, verse 16, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. That Christ, note, right? Christ, the Messiah. Christ, the anointed one, may dwell in your hearts through faith. 
that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. You know, I used to, as a child, I used to always feel it was like disrespectful to say Christ, like you were calling someone by their last name, <laughs> you know. But we know now, right, G Christ is not Jesus' last name. <laughs> Christ is really who he is. Christ is his title. It's like the Messiah Christ. And that's why now when I, s I see Paul writing Christ Jesus, it's like the anointed one Jesus, the anointed one who saves. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus living in you. Christ Jesus living in you, in you, in you. Christ, the anointed one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So, guys, I just want to encourage you today to just open your hearts afresh to the Christ. Just begin to manifest him from deep within you. Hallelujah. See, so today as we close, I'm going to get I'm get, having Peter, hopefully you have that song, right? It's one of Peter's recent songs which haven't been released yet, but, but I, I invite you to engage with the words. Listen to the words, engage with the words, and then I want to pray for you guys as we close. Yes? Christ in you is the hope of glory. Let's say that. Christ in me is the hope of glory. Christ in me. Christ in me. And begin to think of him as the Christ. And catch yourself during the day, every few moments, connect to the Christ. Keep that consciousness before you. Guys, you're going to see miracles break out in your life in a whole new way. You're going to see manifestations, things happening in every realm of your life. In the financial arena, in your business in your, in your family situations, in work-related situations, it's going to be phenomenal because it's going to happen through the anointed one, the Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So let's listen to that song and just engage with it, you guys. Just open your hearts. Breathe in, close your eyes, and just receive the words. See, we need new eyes, Jesus, to see you. We need new eyes because we have to deprogram from that old picture, that old concept of Jesus in a dress.
Hallelujah. New eyes, guys. We need new resurrected eyes covered with that blood-washed robe to be able to see Christ in everything. Christ in everyone. Christ around us. Christ behind us. And you know what? Start seeing him in yourself. Start feeling him in yourself. Start seeing him in yourself. And then you're going to be able to see everyone through that consciousness of Christ. Amen? Amen. Will the real Jesus stand up? <laughs> right? Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. Woohoo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So just lift up your hands, you guys, so I can just pray for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Today, God, I ask you to embed in us permanently a consciousness of the Christ, the overcoming one, the one with the flashing eyes of fire, the one who's unafraid, the one who's all-powerful, omnipotent, you, whoever was and ever is and ever will be. Eternity to eternity to eternity, that's who you are. And we choose that, God. We choose to be expanded in our spirit to infinity as we explore the realms, the dimensions of your glorious, beautiful, amazing eyes of fire. We love you, Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. And Abba, I just release the power of your presence on each of our beautiful family here. And as we go out this week, God, I thank you for protection. I thank you for preservation. I thank you for power. I thank you for joy unspeakable and full of glory in the Christ. Hallelujah. Christ before us, behind us, within us, around us, below us. Fill us up with you, Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs>